So with the show block complete, it's time for me to turn my attention to the top end of the engine. And for this first step, I've got everything laid out on my clean tray. Um, I've got a new set of JES pistons, and these are 81 millimeters, and they run at a compression ratio of 9.5 to 1. I was thinking about getting a higher compression ratio, maybe even 10.5 to 1, but then I can only get 91 octane gas in this area, so I'd actually have to run with a higher octane. And I just want to build a nice, streetable, reliable engine. So it felt like 9.5 was in the zone for me with that octane level. So that's what I went with. Um, they came with their own um, piston rings, of course, um, wrist pins and circlips. I also had the cylinders um, bored to 81 millimeters to match the pistons. The heads have been gone through by Ted Robinson and he found the valve guides to be completely worn. Um, worst he'd ever seen. Amazed the car even ran. Uh, it was all quite funny. Um, and uh, so these have been all gone through and that was a cause of the uh, blue smoke, of course. So he went through all of these, cleaned up all the valves and new valves guides and all of that kind of stuff and they look brand new. I've got a new set of um, head gaskets um, and barrel gaskets and then some um, barrel shims also. These are one millimeter shims. So what we'll do first is we're gonna measure the piston ring gap. I'll take the piston rings and I'll just install them um, in the cylinders and measure the gap to make sure they're in tolerance. So I've got a light coat of oil on the inside of my cylinder and I'm gonna take my first piston ring with the dot facing up, it would have a mark. It would either say top or have a mark and mine has a little dimple which is gonna face up. And I'm just gonna squeeze this ring together and put it into the cylinder and rotate it down. I don't want to scratch the inside of my cylinder if I can. And I want to get this level inside of the cylinder itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piston ring and install it on my piston as I have here. And then I can just take the piston and push it down on top of that piston ring and I can feel it move down inside the cylinder and the piston ring will come in contact with the top of the skirt of the cylinder and it will stop right there. And I know that now that piston ring is even in the bore right there. So I can go ahead now and measure that gap. So currently we have a ring gap of eight thousandths. So I need to go and work out what the actual ring gap should be um, for these pistons. So my pistons came with this um, ring end gap table and it shows you different applications. I'm just going to go with the first one, the street strip. And it's saying that the top ring the measurement we're looking for is the bore of the cylinder times this 0 0.0045 inches. The second one is the bore times 0 0.005 inches. And then there's a minimum on the actual oil ring um, as well, the rails for the oil ring. So Google tells me that 81 millimeters is actually 3.189 inches. And I times that by the 0 0.0045 equals 14 thousandths is what I'm looking for on the first ring, the top ring. So I'll make a note of that, 14 thousandths. On the second ring, I'm looking at 3.189 times 0.005 equals, I'll just round that up to uh, 16 thousandths. So the first one is 14 thousandths and the next, the second ring is 16 thousandths. I ordered a piston ring filer from Amazon it's a little machine with a sanding disc and a little hand crank. And um, all I do is basically put the ring um, up against these guides here um, with the one side facing, um, touching the wheel. And then we'll go ahead and give it a little crank. It makes a nice square cut on the edge of the ring. So I'm gonna keep on filing both sides little bit at a time and keep on trying it back in the cylinder to, until I get that 14 thousandths measurement I'm looking for. Yep. Oh, it's tiniest bit of drag on it. So I'm going to say that it's good to go. So this, this ring is gapped at 14 thousandths. So these are the oil ring guides and they go either side of the actual oil ring itself, a little sandwich like this. And I've measured the gap on these and they are within the spec of uh, 15 thousandths. So the first piece to install is the center piece. And that goes in the bottom groove here, the largest groove. I'm just gonna bend it over here. And it goes in really easily. 
Now this is the top of the piston with the biggest recess. And what I want to do is put the top reel at the two o'clock position and the bottom reel at the 10 o'clock position, the gap. So I'll go ahead and install the top rail first and this will, oh, it's got to be super careful. This is really, really fragile. That's it. Perfect. This all over the bottom of the piston in the 10 o'clock position. So if we look here, this ring is at the 10 o'clock position here. And then the top ring is at the two o'clock. It's about one o'clock. So I'll move it around a little bit. There it is, two o'clock, so that is that oil ring in there. Beautiful. Okay, this is the second piston ring and it's been gapped to 16 thousandths. And I'm just gonna spread it over the top of the piston. Get my fingers either side of it. And get a go for that second gap, which is perfect. So this is the top ring and it's been gapped to 14 thousandths and it has the dot facing up so I'm just gonna go on ahead and spread the ring, put the back in the groove and pop it down. And there it is in there, in its groove. Okay, I'm just gonna install this piston. I'm just making sure that the gaps are correct. Top ring's in the three, second ring's in the nine o'clock position. And then the oil ring is with the gaps at 10 and two, if you look at the top of the piston. Um, this is the bottom of the piston, this is the top. So I want to put it in like this and this has a direction too. It will tell me on it where the bottom, this is the bottom. Okay, so not moving any of my rings. Perfect. Let's go ahead and center it over there. There you go, center it over there. Ball, and I'm just gonna do this by hand for the Now I'm going to use the pliers to get the oil ring seems to be the one that's hard to get in. The others seem to be fine. I think that's gone in. Release it. And there it is. Perfect. Just make sure I can feel it. If it's good or not. Yeah, that's good. So I have my pistons and cylinders all ready to go with the rings installed. So with cylinders one and four, I'm gonna use the one millimeter shim on the bottom of the cylinder to measure the deck height. And I'll start there so I don't uh, have too little space. And then I'll adjust once I know that uh, distance from the piston to the head. I'm gonna take my shim. I'm gonna take my piston and cylinder. There you go can feel the wrist pin going into the rod. It's pretty even in there, the wrist pin now. So I have these cylinder holding nuts, which I'll put on. And basically that will keep the cylinder from sliding off as we put number four on. Don't want to pinch that gasket. A head gasket and be very careful not to tear it on the studs. There we go. Okay, I'm going to stick some modeling clay on the piston. Maybe just do a line across the top. I think I definitely want to do the sides. What do you think? I don't know. Let's try that. Just going to back the engine down from top dead center with some fettling. Look at that. All right, let's talk these down to 23.5. I'm just going to walk up on that a bit. Perfect. All right, with one and four in place, let's go ahead and crank the engine over clockwise, just really lightly. Make sure I come up past top dead center. I felt that go. Let's go around again. 
see where we landed. Okay, this is exciting. Never been so excited to see modeling clay crushed in my life. Or oh, not crushed. Not crushed. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, the sides got crushed. Of course. That's a fact. That's probably what we're looking for. The sides to get crushed. Oh, that's a perfect example of this one in the corner. I'm going to call that 2.2. My one millimeter base gasket is just too much. I want this range to be about 1.25 to 1.5 millimeters and it's right now it's at 2.2. So I think if I just put the regular base gasket, which is um, 0.25 millimeters, it's gonna get me where I wanna be. Okay, let's say I'm at 2.2 millimeters um, and the base gasket is one millimeter. So that's minus one equals 1.2 plus the regular base gasket, which is 0.25 equals 1.45 millimeters. So that's gonna get me right in the zone if I put the regular base gasket on here, hopefully. Let's try that and measure it all again. All right, let's swap out this base gasket, this one millimeter for the 0.25, and then we'll reassemble everything. All right, I've positioned them in these four corners on the edge. Okay, let's turn the engine over couple of times and crush that modeling clay. I can feel it. Resistance there. Ugh. Okay. Feels pretty good. All right, let's disassemble everything. Okay, let's remove this head. Oh, look at that. So I'm gonna set my carbon to the minimum distance, which is 1.25. Well, let's see if uh, the bottom of the caliber leaves an imprint in the clay. I'm gonna put the end piece on the piston and then the flat piece on the clay and see if it leaves a mark, which it does. So let's set it to 1.5, which is the biggest gap I want and lock it off. <coughs> and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find a clean piece of clay and I'm gonna pop this next to it and press hard. I'm not touching the clay. I'm not leaving any marks in the clay. I can see that I'm not. So I know it's in between those distances, 1.25 and 1.5 millimeters. No mark. All right, I feel good about that. I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna install the circlips inside the uh, pistons and I'm gonna do the right-hand side only on all the pistons, and then I can slide the wrist pin through the rod, hit the circlip on the right, and, and then I'll install the circlip on the left while it's on the engine. I have got the Stomsky Racing Circlip Injection Tool. And what you do with this basically is you, you compress the, 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 the circlip inside this sleeve, then you place the sleeve inside the, um, the recess here where the wrist pin goes, and then you take the plunger and you push it and it pops the circlip into the groove. That's the idea anyway, so let's see how it works. Circlip into plunger, not too far. Just give it enough to get in there. There we go, perfect. Plunger in, push and pull at the same time. Bang. And that looks like it's seated in there, right? I'm gonna take a little look and yeah, that's perfect, right in there, right in the groove. Excellent, okay, moving on, I'm gonna do all six. So I've got the engine covered in cling wrap so that uh, any wayward uh, circlips don't go flying down into the engine case. And I'm just gonna put um, a bit of assembly lube on the inside of the rod channels here. Okay, I've got uh, number one here with its piston installed, uh, the wrist pin just hanging out, the circlip on the right hand side and the base gasket, the 0.25 millimeter base gasket with a light coat of, I'm gonna use this curl T. All right, I'm just gonna use a long socket and my mallet and very lightly tap it. 
There it is, very lightly. So I have my wrist pin inside the uh, sleeve of the tool. You're kidding. Really? That went in without any drama from your mama? That's unbelievable. It's in. Great. First one done. And pull and push at the same time. <gasps> nope, I didn't go in. Phew, thank goodness for the film. All right, let's set it up and try it again. Yep, it's in there, all right? Done. God, that tool's great. That's it. Let's give it a tap. So I've gone ahead and installed the air deflectors, these little pieces of tin around the cylinder, and that helps sort of direct the airflow around the cylinders. And you can make this little modification, which is laid out in Wayne's book, and it's cutting these little one inch notches uh, in certain uh, deflectors around the cylinders so that um, it gets better airflow. And by doing this little modification, you can uh, save about 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit on the engine temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the cylinders and the tops of the pistons ready for the heads. I want to make sure everything's nice and clean. There we are, they're all torqued down. Just checking the height to make sure everything's good. That's good. Well, it's beginning to look more like an engine now with the cylinders and the heads on. I just want to give it a turn to make sure there's no binding. I don't feel any resistance in there at all. Of course, the engine's cold. Again, I feel pretty good about that. No more parts. We have a clean tray.